Hello everybody, welcome to Awesome Rusty Bookcase. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a like on this video. I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers on the channel by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. That was pretty good. Uh, if you have not been paying attention to the last couple of videos, I'm trying to do the intro as fast as humanly possible, because why? I don't know. But because I did it so fast, you should actually subscribe because it's very impressive. I don't know if you picked up on that. Uh, today's video is the last one of the awards videos. These videos have not been doing well, but I committed to doing them, so here is yet another one, and it is luckily the final one. Uh, this is going over the Six Man of the Year award and who I think will win it. A uh, couple of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10, 11 candidates uh, that I have picked out here. I should have said this for the Most Improved Player Award, but it's kind of impossible to pick every candidate for this award because there's a lot of good bench players in the league. It's especially even the case for the Most Improved Player Award, but I didn't say it there, saying it now. Uh, but here are my names to win the award. Now, first of all, you gotta mention jo uh, Jordan Clarkson, who just won the award. Now, I am of the opinion that um what's his name on the jazz australian guy joe ingles he should have won the award over jordan clarkson because i think he was overall a little bit better but he just didn't he wasn't in the six man of the year category i've expressed before i think i made a video about it a long time ago about my frustration with the six man of the year award always being just who scores the most points off of the bench on a good team like i thought for a while like there were there was stretches not not in the recent years but like 2016, I believe Lou Williams or Jamal Crawford, one of them won six man of the year over Andre Iguodala. And it's like, Andre Iguodala is better than them. But because he averages seven points per game and not 16, 17, he's not going to win the award. But that said, with these, with the picks for these awards, I pretty much win exclusively with scoring players because that's typically who wins these awards. So, Jordan Clark's from the Utah Jazz. He could very well repeat. I definitely think he has a good chance of doing that. Uh, Patty Mills of the Brooklyn Nets, I think, is a decent pick here. And with a certain point guard potentially not playing all of his home games because he doesn't want to get vaccinated, there is a very real shot that Patty Mills won't win this award because he's going to be starting a ton of games. But, yeah, I was just going to say there's a chance he, he doesn't... There's a chance he gets a lot more shots because Kyrie's not going to play. Ah, oh, shit, I said his name <laughs> if, as if it was hit, hidden. Uh, but I guess he would start, so that would kind of throw him out of this. But assuming that Kyrie does play the full season, uh, Patty will definitely be a good six-man, but I don't know if he's going to have the scoring volume necessary with the three guys that are above him and that, and really the four guys because Joe Harris is bigger in the scoring uh, hierarchy as well. So probably not him, but he will be one of the best bench players in the league. Bobby Portis. Um, I think Bobby Portis should start. I think Giannis at center and Bobby at power forward would be the the Bucks' best lineup, but more than likely, Brook Lopez is going to continue to start at center. Uh, but Bobby Portis, especially, was good for the Bucks this previous season, and especially broke out broke out in the playoffs. Uh, I've been on the Bobby Portis train forever because he was on the Chicago Bulls, and I loved him on the Chicago Bulls. And then he went to the Knicks and kind of sucked when he was on the Knicks, outside of the one game where he dropped like 30 on the Bulls uh, in a comeback. But uh, he's good. And I think he has a good chance of winning the award, especially because there's a lot more eyes on him. And as we all know, a lot of these awards, to some degree or another, are a popularity contest. Um, after that, uh, someone that I put in question marks here was Kobe White, who uh, I think has a chance of averaging like 15 points per game off of the bench for the Bulls. Now, he did that last year, too, but uh, the Bulls are not very good. And if the Bulls are actually good and Kobe manages to average those 15 again, hopefully on better efficiency, uh, I think he'll have a chance of having his name in the race. I definitely don't think... I, I think he's the worst player among every name on the rest on this list previous and the rest of it. But uh, there's a chance that he has a decently high volume scoring off of the bench for a decent playoff team season. So he'll he'll have his name potentially in there. Uh, the next one I have is like I, I put a slash here because they're on the same team. P.J. Washington slash Miles Bridges, 
We don't know for sure what the starting lineup will end up being because I think they're in a similar-ish tier and they both can play power forward. Uh, I think the the Hornets' best lineup will be PJ at center and Miles at power forward, but you can't do that all the time because PJ can't really play full-time center. Uh, but that means that one of them is going to be coming off of the bench. PJ is a little bit more... Eh, I wouldn't even say he's more of an all-around player. I'd say the of the two who has a better chance of winning the award would have to be Miles just because Miles has been more of a scoring player. Uh, I mentioned in the most improved player race video that he averaged like 20 for the last like 25 30 games of the season for the Hornets last year after there were some injuries and I think off of the bench Miles could be up there with some of the best of them in terms of scoring off of the bench while also being a good defensive player so uh, he has more than just high volume scoring off of the bench uh, Buddy Heald this one has a bunch of question marks next to it um, he could average a lot of points off of the bench for the Kings because uh, it seems like he's going to be coming off the bench, but at the same time, that relationship has been bad for a long time. Uh, he had a down season last year. Uh, I don't know. I think he should be starting, not on the Kings, but on another team. I think Tyrese Halliburton is like 5% better, and more importantly, uh, he is more fitting with what the Kings need and younger, so I think he deserves that starting spot over Buddy, but... Uh, Buddy is also a starting caliber two guard, so it's an interesting situation in Sacramento. Uh, but if he continues to come off of the bench and he's as good as he normally is, then sure, Buddy Heels could have a real shot at winning that award. Uh, Monte Morris of the um, Denver Nuggets. Monte is one of the better six men in the league, but I feel like he's just not high volume scoring enough to really win the award. I feel like if he wanted to go for it, he could like if, if Monte wanted to average 17 points per game he could but he's more about making the right play pretty much every time very rarely do you see Monte Morris making a selfish play if he's taking a shot it's a good shot most of the time or like the shot clock shot the the shot clock is expiring or something uh he is not I don't think he's going to be uh looking for his own shot enough to really win that even though he is maybe the best backup point guard in the league he's certainly up there uh Malik Beasley I put question marks next to him because he's probably gonna start but I have said a couple of times now that I think that and not a couple of times now like probably twice technically that counts as a couple but whatever uh Malik is a good offensive player like a really good shooter specifically but Patrick Beverly, I think, might be better starting at that two-guard spot because of the defense he brings to the table. Even though he's a worse player, I think the team needs his defense more than they need Malik's offense while he can still be a good spot-up shooter. So I might make that my situation and then have Malik come up with the bench. They'd still play similar minutes, but that's just the rotation that I would run. Uh, and if the uh, head coach of the uh, Timberwolves feels the same, uh, I very well believe that Malik would be in the conversation. In fact... If Malik did come off of the bench, especially with the Timberwolves, I think going to be surprising next year if they have health, of course. If the Timberwolves are healthy and decent next year and Malik Beasley is coming off of the bench, he'd be my pick to win this award. Then we have Danilo Gallinari, who I think is uh, an interesting pick because he's a good scorer off of the bench. And I think the Hawks this coming season are going to be a 50 win team. Uh, because they had a 71% win percentage with Nate McMillan as their head coach during the regular season. And going into this full year, that would translate to 58 wins. So uh, I do think there is a case to be made that the Hawks will be good and Gallo will average like 16, 17 points per game off of the bench. So that would definitely put him towards the top of the list and contention. Uh, and in the last name, this is my pick to win the award. I must say I'm extremely biased in this case and there's a part of me that's only picking him because I hope it comes true but Jordan Poole of the Golden State Warriors I think is so he's one of my favorite players he's just so fun to watch and I think you know the, the problem is that he might start enough games with the Warriors and I probably should have mentioned that because I actually I recorded my video talking about my picks before this one uh, which was kind of counterproductive to the idea of the series, but hey, that's how it went. Um, but Jordan Poole, if he doesn't play too many games as the starter, he will definitely be scoring like 15 to 18 points per game off of the bench. And I think with the Warriors getting a resurgence, there's resurgence, there's going to be eyes on them. I think to a lot of people, Jordan Poole is going to be a surprise, even though uh, if you watch the Warriors last year as extensively as, as I did, Jordan Poole being like an 18 point per game scorer off of the bench would not be a surprise. Um, he 
is just such a good score, and I think the Warriors are going to be in the limelight quite a bit, as they kind of are when they're bad, so they'll especially be when they're good. Uh, and it's my hope that Jordan Poole wins the award as a result of that. Uh, that said, uh, Gallo, Malik if he comes out... Gallinari has just as good, if not better, odds, honestly, and as does Jordan Clarkson. And then if Malik Beasley ends up coming up with the bench, I think, and, and, and the Timberwolves are good for what, you know, but like eighth seed good. They, I think they are better choices than Jordan Poole, but I'm picking Jordan Poole almost explicitly because of bias. And to be truthful, I, I do think genuinely that if he gets to like 18 off of the bench, which I think is well within the realm of possibility, his case is just as good as Jordan Clarkson and just as good as Nilo Gallinari. At that point, it'll really just be a matter of who people want to choose. And because Jordan is a bit more of a surprise, Jordan Poole that is, because there's two Jordans in this conversation, uh, because he'll be a little bit more of a surprise, I think people will be more inclined to vote for him. So that's my pick for this award, even though maybe even like 15 minutes from now, I'll say that Gallo is maybe a better pick. I don't know. Uh, it is not a strong 100% pick. Like, well, really none of them are for this because I don't think he really can do that. But yeah, Jordan Poole, he's who I have winning six man of the year. Uh, and if you don't know Jordan Poole, I'd highly recommend you look into him because I was very low on Jordan Poole when I first saw him, like his rookie year. Like it was like, oh, this is a textbook guy who chucks shots and they never go in. The shots started going in, and he's an incredibly smooth and gifted offensive player. And I look forward to seeing him get opportunity on a winning team with the Warriors next year. But that is it. Goodbye. <laughs>